Hey guys, so in this video, I want to answer some questions that people keep asking me in the comments. So the first one is, what phone do I use? For the longest time, I used SF Mono. So this one here, and I've mainly been using the Nerd font, which add icons and things like that to your font. It's by Apple, I believe, and you can download it from any of these links, which I will leave in the kind of description below. The other font that I've used for a long time, and I still use every now and then, is this one. So you can see my face, it's kind of glowing now. Um, it's Berkeley Mono, and it looks fantastic. It is paid, but it's kind of worth uh, the cost, in my opinion. The third thing that people ask me is what terminal I'm using. I'm using Ghosty. I've been using it for a long time, and it's fantastic, super fast, and super minimal. You don't have to do a lot of work to get it to work the way you want. And next is my Tmux config. You see here I have this kind of fancy thing here. Um, I ended up developing my own plugin for this, and it's based on it's based on this Tokyo Night Tmux thing, which looks fantastic. But I wanted it to have like a Groovebox feel to it, so I kind of developed it myself and added some other functionality to it. So you see here, it looks nice in my opinion. It has this like uh, kind of um, your repository information here, your Git info. And yeah, so the other thing is like, what theme do I use in my editor and in my terminal? It's always going to be Groovebox material or Groovebox hard material. So if I open up my NeoVim and go to color schemes, these are the kind of config that I have. So I'm always using kind of Groovebox material. I got it to uh, background hard and context high. So it gives you like more like a darker look to it. And I use the same thing, by the way, for uh, Ghosty. So I use Groovebox Dark Hard, and I really never use the light mode, but I have it there. And yeah, so this is the theme. It looks perfectly good to my eyes, and this is all kind of works for Tmux, for Ghosty, and for uh, NeoVim. Next, one cool thing I've been doing with Raycast is uh, I'm trying to kind of remove the friction and how I kind of navigate things. I want it all to look and feel in a way like NeoVim, because that's what I'm used to. So in NeoVim, if I open up, let's say, whatever files here, um, if I press uh, leader O, I can kind of go through buffers. And if I press leader P, I can go through the symbols. And I like this look and feel. So I did something similar with Raycast. If I press hyper O, I can switch between the different tabs in my browser. And if I press leader K, I can kind of go through the different uh, applications that I have running. So it feels a little bit kind of similar to NeoVim and I'm really liking this workflow. So like HyperK, I can uh, quickly jump between whatever I want in terms of applications. HyperO to kind of uh, switch between tabs and so on and so forth. This has been pretty nice actually for you know, quickly navigating all within the keyboard. And obviously if I go here, I have the Vim kind of plugin so I can go up and down easily as well. Also still feels like a Vim thing. The next thing I want to talk about is some of the tools I've been using. I did make a video about open code last time and I still love it. It's fantastic. It's amazing if you have like, if you try to use multiple LLMs, um, it's like the closest in terms of feeling to any of them. But I also tried to use uh, Cloud Code and I think, I mean, both are great, but Cloud Code also has been super powerful for me. And recently, I think yesterday or the day before, um, Cursor released a CLI. So essentially, if you have a Cursor account, maybe your company have one or something, you can now install it as a CLI and use all their LLMs just inside your terminal. So you don't really have to use VS Code or Cursor for this, and you can still kind of benefit from all the power that it provides. I played with this a little bit and it works nice. And in my opinion, I still think like, you know, open code is fantastic. I think Cloud Code is the closest to like uh, the deepest integration, I guess, with Anthropic. And finally, I want to talk about my Nevum course, which I announced a couple of years ago. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to finish it, but it's still in progress. I still want to finish it. I still want to release it. But I think I want to change a couple of things. Since I kind of announced that a lot of people made amazing courses about Nevum, Typecraft has a wonderful free course on his channel that I think you should watch if you want to learn about Nevum and how to configure it. But I think I want to zoom out a bit and talk about how to use like the things that NeoVim provides out of the box, like more like all the things that Vim and NeoVim provides with their little plugins. 
I think these are stuff that you can learn and transfer to other editors as well, like the emotions things and all that stuff. And maybe you can touch about how I would configure NeoVim with some kind of whatever plugins we can use there. So to answer this question, yes, I think I'm going to actually end up finishing this course and releasing it. And I don't know if it's going to be paid or free. And, you know, it depends on how much effort I ended up putting in it. But yeah, this format is going to change a little bit. It's not going to be like these things. I think like the emphasis on things like these guys here, linting, snippets, Git integration. I'm going to put less emphasis on these things and more on the built-in functionalities that NeoVim or Vim provides. So yeah, that's kind of an update on this course. And the last thing I want help with actually is um, a question. Do you enjoy this type of content or do you kind of want me to talk about different things? And if so, uh, what would you like to see? Um, I'm kind of getting bored of all the stuff I'm making. Um, I think the Vim, Neo Vim, CLI stuff is pretty fun and I like it a lot, but it's getting saturated. A lot of people are making content about the same stuff and I don't know if it's going to be useful if I keep making the same thing. And also like with the whole AI stuff, honestly, like I don't think we're using these things anymore the way we used to. Uh, most people, at least that in my world, like, we just use a lot of AI things. We kind of prompt our way through our projects and build things and um, likely use the editor. So even the LSP, honestly, like you can pretty much build things nowadays without touching any, any LSP features, which is crazy. But this is how we're building stuff. And so let me know in the description, what kind of content are you interested in? What would be useful for you? And just maybe throw some ideas, maybe to help me kind of improve the quality and the type of content I'm making. So yeah, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.